I became very drawn um, to watercolour about 10 years ago, so I find it a very liberating medium. Um, much of my approach to making my work is very controlled, and so this is a perfect counterpoint to that. Watercolour um, allows the characteristics of the pigment to really shine, and in some cases to dance almost. Um, the pigments are given the freedom and a life of their own really, and it dries pretty quickly and is easily to be reworked and removed with water if necessary. Um, just really, really easy. And if you make your own watercolour paint, um, you can make um, a whole vat of it, if you like, of really fluid watercolour. And so you're not limited by scale. Um, you can make pieces two metres um, square and beyond, um, much more, um, much better than just kind of being limited to a small piece of paper. So I'm just going to go through the equipment that I use. Um, and so yes, we have a palette knife, a very good for kind of initially working the pigment and the binder. Um, a glass muller, um, in some cases, is uh, very handy, especially with, for the lighter um, synthetic organic pigments, which are quite uh, resistant to the medium. And um, so it's kind of you roll roll them around between the the surface of the glass plate that I work on um, and the surface of the muller. So you're rolling the pigment. Um, around. Um, also in many cases I just use a pestle and mortar. I don't know which is the pestle and which is the mortar still after however many years it's been of cooking and making my own paint. Um, which piece is which? I don't know. Um, and with some pigments that are toxic um, it's very um, important to wear glasses um, and uh, a dust mask to prevent um, any of the dust getting into your lungs and also um, gloves. There are three different sorts of mediums that I use um, for different qualities. Um, there's a traditional one which is made of um, honey, glycerin and gum arabic. Um, this one's made by Crema um, and um, yeah, it's a, a very traditional as I said, sort of good for um, letting the pigments really kind of um, come into their own. Um, it's quite glossy, um, so the more you put into it, the shinier it becomes, and sometimes if you put too much, um, it can be very, very sticky, and um, yeah, it will never dry, so you don't want that. Um, but it's a, yeah, a beautiful medium to work with. This one is the Lasco Water Resoluble Medium, which is um, creates a much more matte paint. Um, and again, um, very good for large areas of colour and um, yeah you can put as much as you like in really it just makes the paint more open um, and then this one is um, a core watercolour medium um, I mean the Blasco Water Resoluble is an acrylic based a very modern one um, this is also acrylic based I think it <laughs> um, uses Aquasol um, I do believe as um, the, the resin in it and um, I use this one mainly if I've got large um, or heavy um, it's almost like glass frits um, it, within the watercolour that I'm making that it's, it's a little bit like gluing it to the surface so um, the water resoluble medium doesn't seem to bind it enough or the gillets but this sort of really kind of holds the weight of some of uh, those sort of uh, heavier pigments. Okay. Okay, so the first watercolour paint that I'm going to demonstrate making is one made out of black onyx and tourmaline. So these two pigments have different characteristics, different weights. Um, so the tourmaline is the darker one. It's much heavier, grittier, sort of finer, um, and likes to slump and sit um, at the bottom of the grooves of the, the rough piece of paper, whereas the um, the black onyx, which is the grey one, is lighter and as the paint dries it likes to sort of float up to the surface of the, the wet paint. So you get these lovely, um, these beautiful smoky areas here. So for this one, um, I will generally use um, twice as much black onyx as I use tourmaline. Um, so with about, about that much there. Um, to about that much there. Okay, so for this paint um, it's just easy to use a, a regular pestle and mortar. Um, I've just got a little glass one here um, and uh, the more traditional watercolour medium which is made out of honey, glycerin and gum arabic. Um, don't use too much of this because um, the more you put in of this one 
the glossier it gets, which can be quite nice, but if it becomes too sticky and it will never dry. So, just a small amount. And just simply sort of mix the two together. I mean, this always it seems to happen to me, <laughs> as I always put too much in to begin with. But um, I just put um, some more Draconics in. And some more tourmaline. I'm never very precious about quantities, it's just a general idea. Um, and then see what happens when it's turned into a paint. See, that's much, much stickier now. Much stickier paste. Just to make sure it's all mixed up together. It's a very simple thing to do, very easy. And I'm just going to paint it out and see what we've got. So I generally use a pre-wet piece of paper because um, it seems that um, if the paper has been pre-wet and then you wet it again, for some reason um, when the paint is drying, the black on it kind of sort of comes to the top a bit more. I don't know what that is. But, um, Let's wet the piece of paper, re-wet it. Okay. And then pick up some of the paint. And then roll the piece of paper around. Get the water. Maybe a bit more water on this one actually. move the paint mixture around. And see how it separates. As you can see here, you've got the, the grey of the black onyx is moving much more quickly, whereas the tourmaline is much slower to move down the sheet of paper. Okay. There we go. Move that there. And then I'll do a much more simple circular paint out here. See a different sort of separation. There we go. Again, move that around a little bit. Actually, the other one's going to move around too. Right, I'll leave that one to dry. So here's the dried paint out. Um, we've got the lovely area of grey of the um, black onyx just here and a sweep, almost like a smoke trail of it sort of around there and then areas of the heavier, grittier, slumping tourmaline. And then here we've got a nice Model the mixture of the two. This is a watercolour from a few years ago uh, called Daphne, where I used the black onyx and the tourmaline together um, for the rose heads and then just tourmaline on its own for the petals and the stems. Um, and then this is a detail um, close up of one of the closed rosebuds where you can see the grey of the black onyx really rising um, to the surface of the drying paint. As opposed to Daphne, the piece I've just shown you a detail from, um, with this piece I'm wanting to try the mixture of tourmaline and black onyx over a black stained piece of paper. So I've got two peonies already painted in ivory black um, and then I wanted to put a third peony in um, just to see um, the differentiation between the two pigments. Um, what happens, whether it's more apparent, less apparent, um, just see what it's like over a black piece of paper or a dark piece of paper as opposed to white.